today on Straight Talk Africa, a report card on women empowerment in Africa. Some observers say while there is reason to celebrate women in leadership positions on the continent, more needs to be done. That's coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, March 30th. I am Shaka Sali. And hello, it's good to be with you today. And to all of our viewers and listeners on the continent and elsewhere, I'm Ayan Bior, your social media reporter, filling in for Mariama Diallo. Today, we'll celebrate and talk about the empowerment of women in Africa. And coming up later in our STA inbox, you, our audience, have weighed in on our topic throughout your emails and Facebook comments, and we'll reveal some of them ahead on Straight Talk Africa. March is the month when women all over the world celebrate International Women's Day and also participates in conferences to discuss issues that affect them. My colleague, Esther Gizu Yuwat, has more. The 60th session of the Commission on the Status of Women in New York ended last week with a special focus on women's empowerment and sustainable development. Many women in developing countries continue to face significant challenges. In Africa, fewer girls than boys attend school. Few women earn the same salary as their male counterparts in similar positions. Speaking during a similar conference last year, UN Women Executive Director Pumzile Mlambo Nkuka spoke about cultural barriers in a patriarchal society that hinder women's advancement. Governments mend amended constitution, passed good laws, but because we have not transformed society, we have not removed the pillars of patriarchy, we are transforming within a patriarchal society, we are not moving as fast as we need to. Former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton addressing last year's commission on the status of women. Despite the obstacles that remain, there's never been a better time in history to be born female. A girl born in Lesotho 20 years ago could not hope to one day own property or sign a contract. Today she can. Women and girls in parts of Africa where there has been political strife bear the brunt of the violence. In countries like Burundi, South Sudan and Somalia, women have faced extreme hardship. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon also spoke during the same conference. Removing the barriers that keep women and girls on the margins of economic, social, cultural and political life must be a top priority for us all businesses, governments, United Nations, and civil society. But all is not doom and gloom in the continent. In several countries, women are making progress and improving their societies. Namibia's former first lady, Penehupi Pohamba, urged African governments to implement policies that champion the rights of women during a conference on women empowerment. In Namibia, Empowerment of women and girls is a constitutional right. The government developed a policy framework centering on economic empowerment for all. The framework aims at enhancing entrepreneurship among previously disadvantaged persons and concentrate on assisting women, youth, and persons with a disability. The theme for this year's International Women's Day focuses on gender parity. Few women in developing countries own property or businesses, yet most continue to bear the family burden to provide food and shelter. Most have no access to health care. During last year's conference on the status of women, former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton spoke about the progress women have made in the last 20 years. A girl born 20 years ago in Rwanda grew up in the shadow of genocide and rape. Today, she can be proud that women have led the way out of that dark time, and now there are more women serving in her country's parliament than anywhere else in the world. 
In spite of the seemingly uphill battle to achieve gender equality, some of the continent's women have made it to top positions, among them Liberia's President Alan Johnson Sirleaf and the African Union Commission Chairperson Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma. Esther Gidu Ewart, VOA News, Washington. Thanks, Esther, for that report. Joining us here in our Washington studios are two distinguished guests. Haramin Zosongbo, founder of the African Immigrant Organization, and Karin Kaneza, member of the Burundian Women and Girls for Peace and Security in Burundi. I have to say that, uh, ladies, I am profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host the two of you on Straight Talk Africa once again. Pleasure is mine. Thank you for Thank having you. me again. Thank you very much, Naka. You're most welcome. It's a pleasure. Later in the program, we'll give you, the audience, a chance to call and talk with our guests. The number to call is 202-619-3111. U.S. country code is 1. Let me come to you immediately, Harmin. What does Women's Day mean to you, really, in very simple terms? What does it mean to you? Uh, really, I mean, honestly, Women's Day does not mean anything special to me mm -hmm. because I believe that every day is Women's Day due to all the work that women have been doing, all the contribution, social, economic, political contribution that women have been doing in terms of rearing children, educating children, all that, that they've been making on the, on the continent and elsewhere, I believe that every day should be a day of praise for women. What about you, Karim? Why should we, in fact, be celebrating this great Women's Day? Um, I agree with my sister uh, when she says that every day should be a Women's Day. Um, at the same time, I think Women's Day coming from a country like Burundi, which is going uh, through a crisis and where... Um, on a daily basis, women are uh, struggling with coming to terms to what's going on in our country. Uh, we have women who have been, you know, who have been raped, who are fleeing their, uh, our country, who live in refugee camps. I think for me, it's a day where every woman and every man um, uh, stand in solidarity and reflect a little bit on the on the lives and uh, and uh, contributions at the same time uh, of the of, of women in general. But do they really do so? Hopefully they do. I did. <laughs> I hope you did. <laughs> um, Someone might say that uh, what you are probably saying uh, reflects perhaps the concerns of the elite women. Mm. What about the ordinary African woman, the type of woman that I used to see in Kabare very early in the morning, mm. uh, carrying a hoe, a child on her back, going to dig? What does such a day really mean for her and sometimes on a bicycle uh -huh. mm. yeah I the, the thing is I think we live in a global world a world where some terminologies have been have been have been used maybe in a misguided fashion I was I was making a comment just before the show about the word empowerment mm -hmm. and I'm uh, I'm personally uncomfortable with that because it carries this it conveys a meaning of giving power mm -hmm. back to a group of people who mm -hmm. are powerless. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's absolutely wrong. And that brings right. me back to what you're saying. Um, uh, women as, 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 uh, as pa powerful leaders and role models uh, have always been there. They've shaped the humanity as we know, as, as we know it today. Um, I'm standing here because my grandmother gave me the values and an attitude and a worldview that allowed me to go and find, find myself in different parts of the world and being exposed, thanks to my grandmother. Um, uh, when you talk about uh, local women, I, I grew up every year we would go and, and, and sit with uh, my grandmother who was a leader in her own community. And, um, and, and I will never forget uh, things she would, uh, she would say in terms of, you know, how do you, how do you raise a child and how do you, how do you, how do you posture yourself? What's your posture in society? Uh, what kind of values do you need to bring on the table when, you, when you're talking to 
really the world as as we know it today. So it's a uh, uh, it's 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 a challenge for I think women today to um, grasp, especially African women. I'm talking about African women who live in the in a Western world, but who were actually shaped. We've been shaped by African traditional values. Um, it's it's uh, it's not an easy task, but at the same time, it brings it some richness. And I would like to add the fact mm. that you know women in the local areas, women in the rural villages, you know, they have this power embedded within them. And as you were talking about talking about empowerment, that it's really important uh, to celebrate. But uh, celebrate it uh, all that in just one day. That's why I was saying earlier that you know it doesn't really make a big sense. Yes, uh, it's good to. Uh, bring out all the work that uh, they, they have done, you know, the, the power that they have shown uh, or that they continue to show. But in the meantime, do, are we going to, um, you know, put it there and, 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 you know, are we going to just ignore that part of society? Mm -hmm. So I think the discussion is really important around those, those women because the women like you and I, we are today in a developed world. Women in, uh, uh, in, in the, the urban areas in Africa, they are making their way also through everything. The one in the rural areas, they have this power, but they're still lagging behind. It's very interesting that uh, you both say what you have said. and. Uh... I have to add, frankly, that um, when my grandmother, Sarah, was alive, I would go to visit Kavale, and I would find myself literally going on my knees to greet my great, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could never do that to my grandfather, nor could I do it to my father. Mm -hmm. What makes women tick, really? Um, well, you see that a lot of it is just the respect that we paid for elderly people in Africa, in our African communities in general. Mm -hmm. The elderly person or anybody who is older than you, not just elderly person, people, but that anybody who is older than you mm. hold a high importance and value in front of you. And in most of the communities, people don't address the brothers and the sisters by their name. Mm. And don't even talk about your grandparents because these are people who are our, our libraries because they have all the oral tradition, they have the oral mm. values. And it's true that they didn't have the chance to have a written, uh, written, written, uh, uh, how, how do we say it? Have a, a written note of all this knowledge and experience and everything that they have. Mm. But in order for you to acquire that knowledge, you still have to go to those people. And that's why they are so well respected. And again, uh, when we go back to, uh, to, to later in, the, in, in, in history, we know that uh, the French, the, not the French, I always say the French people. The Amazons. The, the, colo the colonizers, actually. The colonizers are the one who change women's role in African society. One of the legacies that they left, among other things, is the change of the status of women, is mm. imposing upon African people a male-dominated society. That did not exist before. Women were playing a great role. They were rulers. They were priestess. They were the one that people will use. Through, through, it's through those women that people connect through the spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual well-beings. Those women were very powerful, and they, they hold a great respect. And that's why we still see some of, uh, you still see our grandmothers, or we have had that kind of respect toward our grandparents. And some of those women, by the way, came from a country which was known as Dahomey, uh, yes. which incidentally currently happens yes. to be, guess where? In yeah. Benin. Benin, where you come <laughs> from. That's true. The that's Amazon. True. The Amazon. And that's Absolutely. why I usually say, you know yes. what, For every woman should be an Amazon. Yes. Because the Amazon are the most the most important, one of the most important, I won't say the most important, but you know, the most, one of the most important uh, group of women in history. You would explain Defenders a little bit fighters. further about the Amazon when we come from a break. Now we will pause for a short break and would like to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now on the social networking website Twitter and we are tweeting live. Follow us at VOA Shaka, that's VOA Shaka 
and join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag VOA Women Empowerment. And we are still on Facebook. Just enter the keyword Straight Talk Africa. Become a fan and connect with other friends of the Voice of America. We'll be right back with you, so please don't go away. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. What is your opinion about today's topic? Call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. country code 1. When you call, remember the following. Ask only one question, keep your comment brief, and turn down the volume on your radio or television. Now let's return to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gidu, you at, and this is, of course, Straight Talk Africa, coming to you live from Washington. Let me come back to you, uh, Haramine. Earlier, of course, you talked about uh, the great Amazon ladies who hailed from present-day Benin. What kind of women were those, really? What made them especially tick? Well, they were special in a way that they were very, very strong women, mm -hmm. very powerful women. In what sense? Fearless women. Generals. Generals. <laughs> All that's quite possible. Mm -hmm. When you see Amazon come, you have to buy down or you have to get out of the mm. way because they have shown so much courage and bravery that uh, the king has appointed them to become first, they were first uh, the bodyguard of the king, mm -hmm. and then later they were sent, they were the first women warriors. Bodyguard of the, the king? Yeah. Maybe yeah. that is in fact where the late brother leader, Kanro Muammar Gaddafi, borrowed the leaf from, because later in his days, Guess who were his bodyguards? Mm. Women. Yes. But in not the same way, because uh, there are other things going on. But these women were just there committed for the kingdom of Dahomey. They were committed to fight the colonizer by all means possible. To the point where, you know, they have a different regiment of uh, Amazon women. Mm -hmm. And different grades, just like we will have uh, uh, soldiers today, you know, with different grades of soldiers. Right. That's what we have before. Some of them, in order to be able to fight, will just, I, I wouldn't say it, but, you know, there, it's just to say that these women have shown a lot of strength and a lot of courage over the years. It is unfortunate that uh, this group of women does not exist anymore. But my hope is that every woman, which we do because whenever we see a woman rising and fighting for the country, for the rights, for human rights and so forth, we call that women an Amazon. An because Amazon. that's what they have been in the past. And uh, my call is for every single woman to be an Amazon. They also had uh, another characteristic they practiced what was known as polyandry, the opposite mm. of polygamy. Mm. True? Well, the Benin, Benin, the Benin Amazon uh, were not practicing polyandry because we live in, in a society where it's a completely patriarchal society. The shift, the shift came when uh, the, one of the king died Mm -hmm. and his uh, um, twin sister became a queen. And that's when they created the Amazon group. And that was back in the, in the 18th century, back mm -hmm. 18th centuries. But then later on, the group becomes really strong. And actually, in order to be uh, a good Amazon, you were not supposed to be married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah, yeah. you were not supposed to be saw. married. Mm -hmm. so Just like Pauline, priests, like Catholic priests. Yeah, I mean, because in order for them to, to go in the front and then fight for a whole uh, kingdom, 
an entire kingdom, you know, they need to focus. And to that's be distracted. So they need to sacrifice. Uh, they, yeah. need, they need to sacrifice, they exactly, to be and be focused and do the work okay. do, to have a well done job. Very interesting. Uh, just wanted to add something mm -hmm. very quickly. Mm. The Amazon spirit you just said, um, you just mentioned, I think there's a common thread. That's what I was thinking while she was talking. There's a common thread throughout humanity in terms of you have, you have the Amazons of Benin, of the Kingdom of Dahomey, and mm. then, but over years, uh, by the way, in Burundi, we also had uh, a very famous mother, you know, queen mother called mm -hmm. Dede Komutima, mm -hmm. you know, who actually led uh, the, the, the kingdom. And where uh, she, did she come from? Was she a she's Mugano? Burundi. Was she's, she a she's Mugano? Burundian. A Tutsi? Or what was she? She was, she was part of a, of a, of a clan um, from which women were uh, married to, to, the, to the Baganwa. Mm -hmm. We had different clans, mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. she didn't have to be necessarily mm -hmm. a Muganwa. Mm -hmm. Uh, but nevertheless, she, she, um, she, she was very prominent in a, a very important chapter in our history. And we also have Inamujandi, who was a, a woman uh, rebel who mm -hmm. actually waged a war against the, the king and the, the colonizers. But anyway, but later on in life, let's remember, I grew up uh, being uh, very much influenced by what I read about women like Adelaide, uh, 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 um, Tambo, uh, Albertina Sisulu. Mm -hmm. um, so you, 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 you have... Miriam Makeba. Miriam Makeba, uh, uh, Wangari Mathai in Wangari Kenya. Mathai. So we, 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 we you have, you, you have writers like uh, Chimamanda uh, mm -hmm. Ngozi Adichie, you have poets. I mean, now I remember Katie Nijawan, who was a very, um, uh, 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 a very... Um, important uh, voice in, in, the, in the struggle in Burundi these days. And then, uh, so you, you, you have a whole variety of voices, who've, female voices, who've been really around us uh, all these years. Mm. And going back to what you were saying, empowerment, I think empowerment, w what is it? It's really to recognize what we've always had, what we've always seen, um, sometimes ignoring it, but it's always been there. But, um, I'm a member, as you said, of a of the of a women and girls movement, I think of the president um, Marie Louise Warichako. She's a fantastic, fantastic leader. Um, we trace the movement as a as a as a as a group, as a think tank, as a um, uh, as a group. We 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 trace our roots back to, for instance, the March of Women for Peace in Burundi in 2014. We had 3,000 women in the streets of Bujumbura. In 1996, we had the women who went to see your, um, uh, President Museveni asking mm -hmm. for, the, for the embargo to be lifted up. Um, so we, we, we have a rich, a very rich history which sometimes goes uh, ignored mm -hmm. and you know, left because, on the side. people usually, why do you think, you know, the reason why I think that it goes that... Uh, is ignore is because people trace it so far back. People yes. tend to forget history, especially yes. when it's go, it suits them, when mm -hmm. it goes in their favor. Mm -hmm. Because today you will see men who will say, you know, uh, you need to behave like our grandmothers, or you need to, uh, you need to be a sub submissive mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. you need to be this and that. But that was not the case before. That was not you the know? case. And they're they talking about politics. equality and yes. all those today. Yes. Because, you know, it suits them, it works for their agenda. But in the past, that was not the case. Yes, well, because well, history is far for, it's really difficult for people to trace history back. And that's something we need to do, actually. Absolutely. We need to do. It's and good, so of course. I, yeah, uh, I totally agree with mm. you. It's a good yeah. to celebrate and uh, to talk about uh, the great things that uh, women in the past have accomplished. But what about today's woman? Uh, she's held back, obviously, by certain factors. Yes. Some of them are what? Karicho? You would say that culture is the first barrier. Um, I think uh, man-made conflicts is another one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, attitudes, social attitudes, mm -hmm. um, which don't have anything to do necessarily with culture sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and, but at the same time, I would say that we yeah, have I want to add, you mm -hmm. say, you know, the behavior is one, behavior yes. is one aspect of it. Yes. The social perception that people have on women Mm. In, on women is one thing, and then of course we have all the uh, the cultural values, as you just mentioned, the, the, the norms that they're expecting women to have, 
the customs, the expect women to, to you know, the behavior they expect from women, the expectation attitude. in attitude. general, the attitude, mindset, exactly, the mindset. Exactly. Yeah. The mindset so maybe the in fact what so is needed uh, is uh, fundamental changes in both men's and women's attitudes and mindsets really oh yes oh yes because we see that a lot of the issue today is not just men issue it's not you know if women are lagging behind it's not because of uh, it's not because of uh, because of uh, men but it's also because of women and that's an issue we need to address education when choices are being made for example in a family you more often see that uh, it favors the boy child, mm -hmm. not the girl child. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing is, I believe, um, depending on where you are, if it's in the, if it's in the, in a village setting, I would argue that this trend is changing, slowly changing. Uh, you have universal education in most African countries now which um, has obviously a direct impact in terms of girls' uh, educational enrollment. Universal um, education? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Free education, what they call the free education. Well, I've heard about uh, universal, for example, <laughs> primary or second education in countries like Uganda, my friend. But when you look at those places, there's no education there. No, I'm not talking about the quality of education, but I'm talking about the state stating mm. that every kid girl or boy can go to school which was not there before they state it they, they talk stated. they talk they yes, yes and that's but, the difference yes, between frankly, that what is written yes. in constitution yes. and what is happens in reality precisely but i do believe and you see it on the ground mm. that we're talking about the family mm. that has a certain impact on the family right mm. of course on the state side there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of there are a lot of things that need to be that need to be done um, uh, strengthening of the institutions and, 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 and some transparency and I mean the reason why education is not really being implemented the way it's being stated it's because the, the infrastructure is not there we all know that because there's a rampant corruption mm. there's no inf emphasis on the education but on the family side the fact that your governor or the local leader will come in front of a community and say people you are encouraged to send your kids to school it's going to be very different from the times of my mother, for instance, of course, who yes. was actually uh, told you can't go to school. She That's had to. True. She had to run away from home. My mom went to All school. Right. She to ran away. Yeah, yes. We have to recognize so, that there have been you, a you big can't change. go to school because mm. you are a girl. Exactly. Yes. That was mm -hmm. in you do not 1960s. Need education. You in do not 1960s. need education. You need to be married. Your house is exactly. this, your, your place is you in the not, house. You will not use it. You will yes. not use your education. You will not use it. And, or you will and not get let's, married. You let's will not find a husband. Let's also say that that is not only in Africa, that in Europe, in the Western world, it was also like that. I always, I always have this argument that what did you it's get an evolution. To, what did you get the African a, most of the African, nowadays African cultures from? Because mm -hmm. they come from the European world, because they have been colonized by the European people, and because of that, they have they bought a lot of the European cultural The values. stratification of the society. Yeah, exactly. uh, a very superficial stratification, right. and, and um, the ladder. So you always have someone who's on top of you. Yeah. That's what we got from yeah. the colonizers, yeah. for sure. But what about uh, the, the selfish interests of the vanguards of society, culture, mm -hmm. the men? Without colonialism, the men themselves on the ground in Africa. Mm -hmm. Is that sort of a change that is inclusive in their interest? Do they see it that way? Whether, let me get to your question, Ryan. Whether they see women as allies, mm -hmm. as partners mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. um, it depends, it depends, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> because it depends on the Let me area. give you a, a yeah. practical example. Let's mm -hmm. talk about uh, the UN Resolution 1325, mm -hmm. which, asked, um, which really recommends and requests a greater representation and participation of women mm -hmm. in peace negotiations. Mm -hmm. Now you look at 1990, between 1990 and 2000, mm -hmm you had 11% of peace negotiations which made direct references to women. But Between 2000 mm -hmm. and 2014, mm -hmm. 27%. Mm -hmm. Some progress. Today, 
2014 out of the six major peace negotiations we've had on the on the in the world really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A good 67% of those accords made mm. reference to, to women. Some but, progress. But then, mm -hmm. th that's where the but comes, um, only 9% of women are part of the negotiation teams, mm -hmm. are negotiators. Interesting. So yeah. they will be at the table, we but will have yes. their numbers, but those who will be have no opinion. really having protocols and issues to debate on will be very uh, minimum. Yes, so I that's I get, I, 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 you have that. I, I get you. Well, unfortunately, time happens not to be our best ally. You're tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. We'll have more of a discussion in a moment. But first, here is Ian Bior. Take it away, Ian. Thanks, Shaka. Still to come, we'll reveal some of the fantastic feedback we've received from you, our audience, through social media. But now, here's our letter of the week from a Straight Talk Africa Facebook fan who responded to our question of the week. Our letter of the week comes from Martin Nyalusi from Tanzania. He writes, Kenya's Wangari Mathai showed a way for women and men to empower themselves through her war on conserving environments. Through her work, she made sure that the world was a better place. In Swahili, let us call her Mama Wa Africa or Mama Africa. could be French, English, Portuguese, Bantu, Arabic. It is the beat. The African beat that counts. The beat does all the translations. It cuts across all languages and gives us the understanding that this is the African beat. It is so distinct. And adhesive. It binds us together. African beat on the voice of America. For more information, visit our website at www.voanews.com slash African beat. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. Call us now with your questions and comments. The number 202-619-3111. And the U.S. country code is 1. Call us collect and we'll pay for the call. Or call directs and we'll call you right back. Remember to keep your questions brief. Now back to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gizui Ewart, and welcome back to Straight Talk Africa, live from Washington. Once again, it's time to bring in my colleague and social media reporter. Take it away again, Ayen. Thanks again, Shaka. We got tremendous feedback in our STA inbox to this week's question. As Women's History Month is drawing to a close, U.S. President Barack Obama says we must remember the trailblazers of the past including the women who are not recorded in our history books. We honor their legacies by carrying forward the valuable lessons learned from the powerful examples they have set. This leads us to our question of the week, which asks, which African women do you feel have empowered Africa and why? Before we begin, I'd like to thank all of you for using all, all of our social media platform to communicate with us. And another reminder that we are tweeting live today. Use the hashtag VOA Women Empowerment. And if you haven't yet, please follow us at VOA Shaka. And speaking of, let's go to a tweet from Emmanuel Cacelli, Afri who says African women who, who've empowered Africa are Winnie Mandela, Miriam Makiba, Ellen Johnson, and Joyce Banda. And well, Shaka, those are certainly um, an incredible group of women. Uh, your take on that. Very interesting. Uh, you want to go for that, uh, Harmin? Go for it, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I was saying earlier, you know, I strongly believe that the number of women that they mentioned that have influenced uh, the continent, uh, but we don't forget also the one who were uh, unspoken of, the one we never heard of. And... Uh, I mentioned earlier the Amazon women. And most of the time I say people don't talk a lot about the Amazon women because uh, it's probably, Benin is probably a Francophone country and that's why we don't hear a lot about it around here. But they have played a great I role. Uh, it, great, wonderful. And uh, we have Wangari Masai, <coughs> and I have had the opportunity to work with her on a project related to environment. And I was really pleased with she... the work that <coughs> she was uh, doing. And, you may be interested to learn that uh, she appeared on this very program not once, not twice, 
but, but many three times. times. Oh, three times. Lucky mm. you. Lucky mm. you. She is a trailblazer. She, she set up a great example for women to just go for, to fight for the, for the, for the right thing, for the right and for the right thing. Very interesting. Uh, Ayen? Thanks again, Chaka. And thank you um, for using our social media platform to communicate to us. Let's begin with a comment from Straight Talk Africa Facebook fan, Quikariza Michael, who writes, all African women who gave birth to the revolutionaries of Africa. Chaka, it's really hard to disagree with that. What's your take? Very interesting. Uh, what about that, uh, Karin? Ah, well, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think Africa, we, uh, we always see our continent in different perspectives. I think for me, um, right now, I see Africa going through um, another revolutionary um, uh, struggle mm -hmm. um, from the times of colonization. And I cannot, and my heart goes out to, um, and I, I'm more, in, um, I think, sensitive to those mothers who are not heard, who are not seen, those who um, um, have given birth to these uh, men and women. I mean, we, we, I, Look, when you look at the, the, the types of conflict we have, we now have women who are fighters uh, um, in, the, in the likes of the Amazons, sometimes for the wrong, uh, from, for, for the wrong wars or the wrong causes, uh, but sometimes it's for the, you know, there might be causes out there which they um, uh, aspire to carry, to carry uh, forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think of their mothers. Um, we, we talk about um, Oliver Tambo and you think of Steve Biko and, and you think of their mothers. Mm. Uh, you think of uh, Nelson Mandela and you think of his mother. Um, all these you know, powerful figures uh, on the African continent uh, whose um, characters were mu very much influenced and they themselves um, have, have testified on that. Very interesting. Uh, um, any more reaction uh, from our audience, Ayen? Yes, we certainly have uh, more reaction. Let's go to another comment from a Straight Talk Africa Facebook fan, Abba Musa Yao from Nigeria, who writes, Nigeria has many women that have made us proud, but I suggest Anikepo Akande, president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce. And our last Facebook comment comes from Tumusime Rogers from Kabale, Uganda, who writes, Winnie Byayima, the wife of Ugandan opposition leader Kizi Bisege. She is the executive director of Oxfam International, an engineer, a politician, and a diplomat. She foresees what is best for many people's lives. Shaka, back to you. Very interesting because, in fact, uh, that Facebook uh, comment comes from uh, the little town where he was truly was born and comes from Kabare, yeah. southwestern Uganda. Huh, interesting, interesting. How do you respond to uh, that Winnie Bianyema lady? Incredible. You know, I do not uh, read a lot, really, about uh, this person. You might tell me more about it, but... Uh, Karin will I, probably be <laughs> the right person to talk about her. <laughs> no, she's a fantastic, uh, fantastic leader. I had the pleasure, uh, the honor to meet with her once, um, uh, many years ago. And uh, she, she, she just has this uh, aura, this presence, which cannot be ignored. Um, and and, and she, she, she fought long and hard uh, throughout her life. Uh, um, she, she started, I think, she was among the very uh, few women who were involved in the liberation struggle and uh, rose in the ladder. And, and here she is, uh, the director of, a, of, a, of an organization like Oxfam. It's, it's a fantastic journey. And I think it, she's a very uh, inspirational um, figure. I can tell you that uh, when I had the privilege of being uh, one of the co-moderators of the Ugandan presidential debate oh, in yes. the Ugandan capital Kampala on February 13th, she came in wearing a very beautiful African dress, coming to attend the debate. And of course, her husband was on the podium, mm -hmm. one of the presidential candidates, uh, Dr. Chiza Besige. And uh, the whole International Conference Center, my friend, rose up and well started cheering, as if, in fact, they were looking at the next first lady. There she was. Well, for thanks, Ayen, for bringing us this week's audience reaction. 
Thank you, Shaka. It's been a pleasure. And that does it for today's social media segment. Just a reminder that we appreciate all the feedback, whether it's in a social media form or using other means to communicate to us. Please keep them coming. And if you are new and if you're a new fan, drop us a line at Africa TV at VOANews.com. Once again, our email address is Africa TV at VOANews.com. Or post your comment on our Facebook page. Enter the keywords Straight Talk Africa. Be sure to visit us online at voaafrica.com or you can join our YouTube channel, sign up to VOA TV to Africa and follow us on Twitter at VOA Shaka. Um, a reminder that the show is streaming live every Wednesday. Uh, uh, tune, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, tune in to VOA Straight Talk Africa TV program page on our website or simply watch us live on our mobile device. Just download the VOA mobile app now, let's take a look at what's on tap for next week's program. Next week on Straight Talk Africa, we'll discuss the role of development partners in promoting democracy and good governance in Africa. Join host Shaka Sali and his panel of guests as they talk about democracy partnership. That's next week on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gidhu Ewart, and welcome back. Today we are celebrating and talking about the empowerment of women in Africa. Our distinguished guests are Harmin Zosongbo, founder of the African Immigrant Organization, and Karin Kaneza, member of the Burundian Women and Girls for Peace and Security in Burundi. Well, ladies, again, I have to say that I'm profoundly honored and uh, extremely, extremely gratified to have the opportunity to host you one more time on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you. You're most, Thank you. You're most it's welcome. A, you're most welcome. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Now, what do you think, uh, frankly, needs to be done in order to make sure that uh, today's girl child is basically viewed as a uh, you know, her, her brother. Um, <clears throat> there's something I would like to say, mm -hmm. um, which I think um, uh, set a precedent last week. It's the sentencing of uh, Jean-Pierre Bemba um, mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for rape, for rape. Mm -hmm. in Central African Republic. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of uh, the case of uh, Jean-Paul Akayezu in 2000. Um, when the 1994 the, genocide. The 1994 genocide in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And I think um, at the core, um, the core issue when one looks at the, the concept of women's empowerment, it's really the respect. It's really respecting, respecting, uh, bringing um, our respect to what is sacred. Um, the issue of rape, uh, when I think of, of, of the legal, uh, the jurisprudence that has been set by these cases, um, I cannot, uh, I have to hope that in a, in a near future we will have a culture, this culture of impunity being reversed slowly. Um, and that would hopefully um, start a process whereby girls, and women in general, uh, whether it's in the, in, the, in, the, in, a, in the framework of a conflict or not, start to be respected. Mm. Um, it, and and it's, it's unfortunate that we start to look at the worst case of dehumanization, starting there and then walk our way to a very decent request of, can I go to school? Because if that is possible, if that is permissible, then everything else um, can. Everything else will be permissible. You uh, do you understand my? Canna. I don't know if you get my argument. You're taking away the I, I agree with it's you. I totally agree with you because um, you know, in the first thing that is important in this whole issue is the respect that uh, people. And if you respect the girl, you respect the girl the same way you res you give respect to the boy. You know, we wouldn't end to where we are today 
talking about gender inequality mm -hmm. because they are just basic rights for women or girls to be protected to not be victim of violence mm -hmm. it's true that a lot of the african uh, uh, constitution uh, have uh, a provision for uh, Guaranteeing girls rights. Uh, guarantee the right for, for girl, girls child. and women mm. but what are the specific plan that they have to make that happen it the doesn't implementation. exist the implementation of it and a group like uh, African Views is uh, put something to call, together called AVAWA, is African violence, sorry, uh, anti-violence against women, against women. Mm -hmm. And that is we, making a call also for African government and the different international organization to take that seriously, to call on the African government so that they have a step by steps point that shows how they're going to impl implement all these things that all this right mm. that are stated in constitution but mm. while in fact they're not being implemented in different areas in africa luckily of course uh, we are beginning to see some fundamental progress really correct yeah. because in some countries like ghana for example you do have a woman chief justice yes mm -hmm. And you have many lawyers, including our mm -hmm. own Karim Kaneza, right mm -hmm. here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Huh? Mm -hmm. We have women ministers. Oh, yes, we, we have do. a lot of powerful women. women presidents. Yeah. Women, women presidents. President. We have that's a, right. Africa is the number one when it comes to that. You know, we have, have four women so far. The U.S. none yet, right? But, but you see, <laughs> there is a saying that uh, you find sometimes people with titles, with uh, positions, but with no authority. That is true. You want to elaborate on that? I was going to say I'll come back to it. Yeah. yeah, I was going to just. I was going to say, and maybe it 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 will talk a little bit on what you 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 just said, Shaka. Mm. I think fundamentally we need to transform our societies, mm. um, and we are in, in in an era of transformation. Uh, you see it through the changes that are happening throughout the continent, really, uh, in terms of people claiming um, their God-given rights, really, to be true and vibrant participants in the making of their societies and their government. You see that, we, we, we feel it, and amongst those citizens, mm. you have a great representation of women. Um, again, I go back to what I said in Burundi. Women went, they went on the streets. Women have, um, have been really at the, at the forefront of, of many struggles. But, but I believe but that, you know, there is this, there is but this, we need this, there are reserves, yeah, when it comes to that. We, because the struggle is happening somewhere else. They have, they show We, we need struggle. results. But if you don't mind, mm -hmm. uh, ladies, let me go to the lifeline of the show and bring in uh, some callers from the continent. Good evening, Agri from Tanzania. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Agri, can you hear me? Yes, Shaka, can you hear? Yes, please. What is your question, Agri? Well, my question is today, Shaka, just trying to ask uh, about the women. What are they doing exactly to empower the women who are exactly living at the villages? What are they? What? Hello, Shaka? Hello? What are they really doing to empower the women oh. who are living and stay at the villages? Because it's happened that uh, most of the time they're doing is benefit themselves to the women who are staying in town. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the other side of the continent, Liberia. Good evening, Abdul from Liberia. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you, Shaka Steven. My name is Azulai, calling from Liberia this evening. I have a serious issue with our president, who happens to be the first female president in Africa. Uh, it, 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 it is embarrassing to have a female president within a country where you have more women who are working within government, but they fail to empower girls within our country. The fact majority of our young sisters in Liberia, they are living on prostitution, and for us, we don't think it should be that way. Looking at a country who was, who was the first to produce a female president, in Africa, 
And looking at that, that country with that type of bad record, I don't think there is, there is the right direction that we should be going in. So I think it is now time that for international partners see reason to come in to see our best, they can help us to, cut, to, to, to combat this type of ills within our society because it's found just for the young people. Some of the time they push the issue of women should be in power. Yes, we all know that when women are in power in society, they will encourage more people to say, oh, yes, let's find a way out to, to go to school and to acquire education so that tomorrow we cannot be liberated to, liberated to men. But if I'm in Liberia, my gender of our sisters, they are not going to school only because the people who should be helping them out, they are not helping them out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know exactly whether I got him, but uh, mm -hmm. can we answer the first question from Tanzania, uh, which in fact uh, um, asks you, if you remember correctly, what are you doing to empower the women in the villages? Uh, is uh, the question being addressed to me specifically? Not to you, but to the panelists. Oh, okay. Well, I will say uh, in... Personally, I have been doing a lot uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, girls and women issues. Uh, for many years, I work uh, with uh, my dad's orphanage, which is uh, <coughs> uh, in Benin, to ensure that uh, women, women protect the children against infanticide. And infanticide is this ritual where a woman who deliver a baby breach, meaning that the baby had the feet first, they believe that is a bad luck for the family, and they mm -hmm. have to kill the baby. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And a women or kids who have start having the teeth first, they believe that uh, is is an evil. Or a kid whose mother die uh, during childbirth is a bad luck for the whole tribe. They will leave that uh, kid in the bush until the kid dies. And so since uh, 19... That is a practice that uh, practice, actually goes on in Benin? It is a Benin. practice. Uh, going, it's not actually... It's, it, didn't, it hasn't started in Benin. According to my research, this is something that's been going far beyond the Roman uh, Empire, going that, that far. Have you heard about still, that uh, hmm. in your neighborhood? No. It is going on, and it's still my, the orphanage is still there and has about 32 kids in it. And these are all kids who have been saved from infanticide. Mm. So since uh, the 90s, you know, as uh, a teenager, we've been working hard, not only protecting the children, but also uh, lately working with uh, women in those areas mm. to stand off against uh, child abuse, stand against uh, the protection of the children against such practice. And uh, lately, uh, also, I have been working closely with women to educate them, to give them sexuality education for sexual transmitted diseases that they're not aware of, that we in the Western uh, culture, we know about, but those women have no idea about. So a lot of the work that I'm doing now, empowering women and girls, whether they are in the rural area, in the urban area, or even in the diaspora, mm -hmm. is regarding sexuality education for women. Because a woman who cannot stand and talk for herself, talk about her body, is going to be difficult for such women to be a leader and stand in front of people and raise her voice and re talk about her own rights. Very interesting. Uh, what about the, uh, uh, the question from Liberia? I don't know whether you got it I, very well. No, I didn't. I was actually going to answer the, the first, uh, the <laughs> first question myself. But I, was, I think the sense I, I, I got think, out of yeah. it is that, um, uh, yes, you may have, in fact, a female president. Yes. But at the end of the day, nothing, has, nothing has trickled down. Yes. And in fact, he has a point because when I was a kid, Growing up in a primary school in Kabare, southwestern Uganda, I remember one of the few countries that had a female president was a country called Ceylon, which is, current, which is currently called as Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. It had uh, a president, Bandara Naike. But when you look at the status of women in Sri Lanka today, nothing much has changed. Mm -hmm. If you looked at Pakistan, for example, when Benazir Bhutto was the prime minister, the daughter, of course, of, uh, you know, Bhutto yes, himself. Bhutto, Bhutto himself. Mm. Nothing much has changed in terms of the status of women, frankly, in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So having a female president 
does not necessarily really translate into gains by women, even though, of course, she serves as a positive role model. Yeah. I think there are two, two issues here. The first one is um, every woman who is in a position of power, let's say, will be uh, operating within a gentleman's club. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Um, my question would be, I wonder if there were 10 women president, whether they would not be changed. And if because in fact that probably that environment, that society, exactly. were to be democratic. Exactly. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the first thing. And the other issue is, I think we're also victims of a gap between our African society, our countries as they are, mm -hmm. as, as, as uh, um, uh, weak as they are, and Positions which have been framed and conceived within a Western mindset. Um, what I want to say is, if you go, for instance, within our movement, and I personally, when I was uh, working in Burundi, we would, we, we would go to the ground, we would go to the communities, to the local, at the local level, and you would see that things which were happening in 1980 are different now. Give you a very practical example. Mm. Women will be, they now know that, for instance, they can inherit. They might not get the inheritance everywhere, but some women do at the, at the, at the village level. The laws have been put in place. The, the, the laws have not been put in place, and that is the... But that uh, is what is needed. But that is the legal fight we have to do. But at the same time, at the local level, you do have a, some sort of a change of mentality mm -hmm. due to the leadership that has been exerted by women themselves in their own lo in their own communities in their own families. I agree. I agree. And what you, it, yeah. what, you what we see, we might see the Ellen Johnson, and we might see the Winnie Bianima, but we are not seeing Correct. the Charlotte, the the yes. Jacqueline, Correct. the Karines, the we are. Not me, but I'm saying, you know, these, these, other, these other women on the ground who are actually working silently and tirelessly for the change to happen. And that is why... But I thought that, that uh, I, I thought that from everything I've heard that we should be able to see that in a country like Rwanda. And I'm not sure if we don't see it. What do we see there? I hear you obviously have the largest number of members of parliament. Mm -hmm. These are not elected by their people, mind you. These are appointed by a president, Paul Kagan. Mm -hmm. So are we talking about the ways in which they are elected, or are we talking about the change that they are affected? Who do they, they owe allegiance to? Do they, do they owe allegiance to their people, to the women, or to the appointing authority? Mm -hmm. I think that parliament, parliamentarians in Rwanda I would be very surprised if they are not elected by their own communities, their own localities. Mm, my friend, you go back and do your you homework. Know, it all goes about uh, uh, this idea of uh, Beijing. Uh, Unfortunately, you see, talking about <laughs> time <laughs> happens to be a better ally. Time is <laughs> okay. a better ally. I have to go. Okay. On that note, thanks to our distinguished guests, Armin Zosongobo, founder of the African Immigrant Organization, and Karin Kaneza, member of the Burundian Women and Girls for Peace and Security in Burundi. Thanks to our field stations, along with our viewers and listeners, we thank you for tuning in. For many of our Voice of America radio affiliates, learning English is coming up next. And tomorrow morning, it's Daybreak Africa with James Bate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning in to Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not bitter Africa. And please remember to keep the African hopes alive.